Jacqueline? Put a pin. Put a lot of pennies in it. Welcome back to my dad's channel. He's going to show you how to make these. This project starts with some really thin stock. One quarter inch stock to be exact. Some of you who have been with the channel for a while might recognize these work pieces as the fan blades I made for the old fan in our living room. Well, we replaced that fan in the big renovation project, but I saved the blades knowing that a project just like this would come up eventually. I didn't want to have to mess with the clamps over and over again as I replaced the fan blades to cut out more pieces of this puzzle, so I put down a sacrificial board, then reached for my double-sided carpet tape, which was missing. I've seen this tip pop up a lot lately for this exact situation. I'm absolutely not the creator of this idea, but if you haven't seen it, allow me to explain. First you put blue, or any other easily removable without residue leftovers, type of tape down on both the faces that you want to hold together. Then you simply put some CA glue on one side and spray accelerator on the other side before pressing them together. Within seconds, the two pieces will be bonded together strong enough that they won't move around, yet when it comes time to separate them, it's as easy as gently prying them apart then peeling away the tape. In order to have a consistent zero on the X-card with these odd-shaped pieces, I just made sure my sacrificial board was square, then drew one straight perpendicular line down the middle of it to reference the straight edge of the fan blade on. With the rounded end flush with the edge of the board, I could jog the bit to the convergence of the line and the board and set that as zero. Then I just made sure that all my cutting paths began to the right of the holes in the workpiece. At this point, cutting was easy. I would just run a path, swap out the workpiece, and run another one until all my parts were cut out. To carve the details, I had to switch bits. I wanted to try a few different things while making the fewest bit switches as possible. So starting with the half moon in the door of the outhouse, I switched from an eighth inch bit to a sixteenth and carved the design. I used the sixteenth here in order to also cut out the door itself without making too big of a gap between it and the door frame. Next I carved the dollar symbols in the sides of the bank using a sixty degree V bit. This seemed a little funny because they were just being carved out in space without any border around them to indicate if the placement was correct. But after switching back to the original 1 8 inch bit and running the next path, it became clear that everything was in order. The final carve I needed was for the bases, and that needed to be out of thicker wood. So using the same tape and glue trick, I attached the board to the work surface, using a different zero this time. With all the pieces carved out, I used a chisel to sever all the tabs holding the parts in place, then sanded them flush with my belt sander. I used some black spray paint to fill in the pockets where the decorations were cut out, then went back to the belt sander to clean up the overspray and the old finish after the paint dried. So after I cleaned the edges up on this and then took all the finish off from back when they were fan blades, uh, I tried to fit it all together and found out that I made a little bit of an error in the computer in that the top edges of all of these fit in the top piece just fine but somehow I missed the measurement just a little bit and the bottom doesn't fit into the bottom channel very well. But that's really easy to fix. I just have to uh, bevel the edge a little bit on the belt sander at the bottom side so it just can barely fit down into that track. So what I've got to do is... take off just a little bit until it fits. It's already about halfway in. There. That's all I need to do to get them all to fit. So I've got this little stack to go through. Let me turn that off. I've just got that little stack to go through and then I'll have all of them fitting just fine. Um, there will be one other little trick to the top piece of the outhouse in that if I take the top and the bottom and put them in here, they're too square. And they're supposed to sit at a very tipped degree and when you lock them into that channel, they, they're actually too tight to get the bottom flush like it needs to be. So I'm going to have to bevel the top edges of the uh, front and back outhouse pieces as well. But now that I've kind of explained that and showed it to you, I'm going to put my respirator back on because I really don't like the walnut dust in my lungs, and then we'll move on. To find the placement for the mouse trap on the bank base, I held the lid on its side, then moved the trap so the catch was right in line with the coin slot. Then I drilled a pilot hole and ran in a screw. 
Later I would add a second screw to keep the trap from pivoting. I set the mouse trap, then put the pieces in place one at a time so I could mark the locations for the pins. These pins are the part that hang over the hammer and catch it when activated. Did you know that the spring-loaded bar on a mouse trap is called the hammer? Because I didn't. I had to look it up. I made some small blocks out of wood, then used CA glue to attach them in the locations I marked out. These don't stick out far enough to be hit by the hammer. Their purpose is to add a little extra meat to the sides so I can put in some small screws. I drilled pilot holes, being careful not to drill all the way through, then turned in a screw by hand. I put the side into the base and made my last adjustments to the screw depth over a loaded trap to make sure everything would line up. After repeating the process to the other two walls, I assembled the bank, leaving the front off so I could watch the first test. That'll do. Moving on to the outhouse, the construction is most of the same with just a few variations. One of which is the fact that I designed the carve based on an old mouse trap, but this new one happens to be an eighth of an inch longer, so I had to shave a little off of it to make it fit in my base. If I had been paying attention, I would have just set the file up right in the first place. Next I removed the catch from the trap because the outhouse is activated a little differently. I used CA glue to attach a small block of wood with a hole through it in its place. I bent a short piece of heavy gauge wire into this funny shape, then slid the ends into the holes and pinched it together. Here you can see how this version of the trap gets activated by pulling on that new catch. The rest of the setup is the same. Attach the trap to the base, mark the pin locations, then glue on blocks, add screws, and adjust them accordingly. I tied a string to the catch, then set up the outhouse so I could test it. Pulling on the string mimics the door opening and sets off the trap. I removed the traps from the bases and applied some tongue oil to all of the parts and pieces to make that sweet, sweet black walnut pop. The last step was adding the handle to the door and the door to the frame of the outhouse. I started by drilling a hole, then using CA glue and accelerator to stick the handle to the door. After a few seconds, I flipped it over and drilled through my pilot hole and into the back of the handle. I added a screw because it would hold the handle more securely and it also acts as the anchor point for the string on the inside. I used a bunch of washers to space out the door inside the frame, then put CA glue on some small squares of thin leather and pressed them in place to act as hinges. I decided I didn't like how light colored the leather was against the walnut, so I used some dark wood stain to make it a little darker. Some of that CA glue must have soaked all the way through the leather because there were spots that wouldn't take the stain. At first this really bugged me, but now I've managed to convince myself that it looks more weathered, just like an outhouse should be. I put the door in the base and marked how long the string needed to be to reach the handle. I bent up another piece of wire into a funny shape then tied it to the string. I set the trap, put it together, and gave it a quick test. Well, what do you guys think? Are they kind of fun? Yeah. Did they surprise you when they went off? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it exploded and went everywhere? Yeah. Yeah. What time this bank exploded everywhere? <laughs> so these two are actually based on ones that my dad made back when I was a little okay. kid. It must have been 25 okay. years ago. Open the arms You want me to open that one? Yeah. We'll do that when we're done, okay? So my dad made the old outhouse and he made a bank like this. That's long since lost, but I've held on to the, the outhouse for a long time. And it's fun to, you know, set it up at work. He used to be a firefighter, so he had it sitting at the fire hall and it would get new people off guard or take them to work and set them up on your desk and eventually some nosy coworker is gonna get what they deserve. Um, I've had this sitting on my desk downstairs for a couple of years and, and not too long ago my brother-in-law was here and he spent the night with us and he was up way too late one night and apparently he was wandering around the basement looking for something to do and eventually he opened the outhouse and it exploded on him. And apparently at first he was really scared and had no idea what had happened and then the more he thought about it the more mad at me he got because who would do such a thing? So they're just fun they're harmless but anyway so this is the old one my dad made these are the new ones what do you think oh i want to say thank you to uh inventables and xcar for helping me out with this project this was a a really cool project for the xcar because it made it really easy to cut out all of the pieces and make it a little bit more seamless if you look at this one up close you can actually see where my dad would have just run it over a table saw blade and cut the grooves all the way out both sides 
as opposed to having the pockets sort of hidden in the base and in the top. But anyway, do you guys have anything else you want to say? Yeah. Um, yeah. What? Yeah. I'm going to say, um... Okay, go ahead. Um, so at the end of this, we're going to, um, make it go up, so thank you. Go ahead, do it. And me? Ready? One. Two. Hey, hold on, hold on. Emmett, can you say, thanks for watching? Thanks for watching. Declan, can you say it? Thanks for watching. All right, one. One. Two. Two. Three. It almost got you. Yeah! <laughs> I just wrote everything! Oh, what a mess.